Hello, YouTube. Uh, so, I had a request um, <clears throat> to do the Mosin-Nagant bolt and also the uh, Mauser bolt. I was going to do them in separate videos. Um, this one is the simpler of the two. Um, and I thought I'd just make a short video uh, to show you uh, a little bit about how it works, but uh, mainly just how to get it apart and back together, which is really easy. So, this shouldn't be too difficult. Um, I have the trigger out as well at the moment because we're going to have a, a brief moment and show how that works. But we're going to set that aside for now and focus just on the bolt itself. So, um, getting the bolt out of the gun is fairly straightforward when it is in the uh, unlocked position um, and you pull the bolt back. If you pull the trigger, it'll come all the way out the back, back end of the gun. And then you're left with the bolt in this configuration. And um, the way to get it apart is uh, fairly straightforward. Um, you're going to essentially return the bolt to the same position it would be in when it's in the gun. When it's actually in battery, uh, the bolt separates into two pieces. And uh, the, the lugs in the front piece completely come apart. Now, uh, what, what this involves means we're going to have to grab the back of it here and pull, and then we're going to have to do some turning. So that involves you know, a good amount of force. There's a big old spring in there. And the other thing is don't pull real far. Um, you don't want to pull the sear out of the track. In other words, the track, it, you want the, this piece here to be rotating the track with you as you go. And remember, just like when you put the bolt in the gun, uh, you're rotating it, the, the handle part, to the right. So since I'm going to start with it to the right just to hang on to it, I'm going to hold the back part still. I'm going to try and do this so you can see the, the back, the whole thing, more or less at the same time. Um, so again, I'm going to push forward, and then I'm just going to rotate and let it go in and down. And so I didn't let this come off of the track, and I set it in gently so that it wouldn't go flying. Now what you'll have at this point is that the track and the front of the bolt will be uh, free to come straight off the gun. And then the, uh, the sear track, the or trigger track, and you know, I never actually looked up the proper name for the pieces of this bolt. I apologize for that. So we're just going to call them doohickeys and stuff, but that's okay. So <clears throat> uh, that's these are single pieces. The extractor is actually machined into it. It's uh, or, or welded in generally. Uh, um, replacing them tends to involve milling it out and hammering a new one in and spot welding it. So it's not. Yeah, I often see just entire replacement heads for sale. Um, now the next part is generally where people start to say, "Well, now I've got this, you know, big pin, and and what do I do from here?" And the answer is that there's a built-in tool, which is the end of the track. So, uh, and I call this a track because the sear um, is sliding back and forth in the track when you're moving the bolt around. And we'll get into that a little bit more in detail uh, when we when we get it all apart. So, um, this part up here can be used uh, as a tool to uh, remove the firing pin. And so basically we just want to unscrew the firing pin. And so this is the exact width. So the, the firing pin is actually flat on both sides, uh, all the way back actually, or for a good distance back, but there's two different widths. There's the narrow part, or the very narrow part where it says the firing pin head. Then there's one thickness here and then a wider thickness here. And this is designed to fit perfectly into that middle bit essentially. And um, all we're doing is we're unscrewing it. So we're just turning it. And you can tell if you're going the right direction because it's only going to go in one direction. You can't keep going over tight. If we look on the back, if we can ooh, get it onto camera. If we look on the back as we're unscrewing it, um, bringing the, uh, the screw closer and closer and closer to the end, um, it's going to stop. You can't really go past there. That's its natural position in the gun, which is why they actually stamp it across like that. Um, but the point is, while taking it apart, you know, you're not going to really be able to go the wrong direction. So um, basically, just set it down, or just sit there, and 
work it around. It, unless yours is rusty, this shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't take a whole lot of pressure. And when it does finally give, it will pop the spring a bit. It's probably not going to fly across the room, but you don't want to be pointing it at anybody. So kind of hang on to it. And especially as the rest of that firing pin, which is fully the, you know, quarter inch wide width of the whole tube there starts to be exposed that's when you want to kind of slow down a little bit you're getting towards the end um, and there it goes so pop and it sticks out an extra inch so really it's only that much spring you got to worry about and then everything's just gonna fall apart um, and what you're left with is your big old mainspring your gigantic colossal firing pin and your uh, bolt handle and the bolt, the bolt uh, tail cocking piece slash sear slash everything else. So in the gun, what's going on is you had this piece screwed in to this piece. And uh, that's it. These guys screw in. And that holds the whole thing together. And so um, uh, basically when you're cocking it, you're, you're really... Um, I'll show you mechanically what's going on here. This piece uh, sits like this. This is your, your sear, and this is your sear engagement surface. And um, when you pull the trigger, it bends this leaf spring down until it clears that, at which point this piece can fly home forward. So it wants to be able to go uh, all the way in, which leaves it protruding out just a little bit. When it's cocked, this piece is holding it all the way to the back. So when you pull the trigger on the motion, you see this whole piece launch forward a half an inch. Um, and that that's what's going on is the your trigger and sear sit there. Of course, if I put the trigger in the right way, it would help. Um, just like this in the gun, in the uh, in the insides. Do, 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 do. Everybody lines up just like that. And so as you pull the trigger, this little ramped surface here makes it so whatever the trigger is sitting against as you as you as you pull the trigger, um, I feel like I'm I'm holding this backwards in my head. Hang on a second. Pull the trigger and I feel like I'm suddenly saying all of this backwards. Ah. This is the problem when I can't fit the entire rifle on the bench. This piece here, trigger here, and this piece free to push against the bottom of the bolt. I'm trying to lay all this out at once so we can see it. You know, I don't know if I have enough arms to be able to demonstrate this gracefully is my problem. I apologize. Alright, so we're sitting more or less like this. Alright, maybe we can't demonstrate this because we don't have three arms. Uh, but the point is that when you when you pull the trigger, what's actually happening is that you are um, going to be pushing this leaf spring down. And as you push the leaf spring, that's held, you know, to the underside of the gun by the by a screw up front. And uh, when you pull the trigger, you're bending it down out of the way. And when you bend it down far enough, it's uh, out of the way of the bolt. And then uh, this, uh, the sear system. And at that point, it's free uh, to travel along the track. Unscrew it again. Maybe that would have been easier to demonstrate without the firing pin in. 
so it's back here you when the trigger is pulled it can then slide all the way forward and that's when everything lines up so <clears throat> that mechanism on the underside of the gun is what I was talking about here so this is sitting here and held in place by a screw go ahead and put him back in if I can find Mr. Screwdriver. Now, the Mosins didn't come with a trigger return spring of any kind. The trigger is actually left uh, floppy. They make a uh, a lot of trigger return springs they're really just not a necessary part of the gun but here's what I was talking about as we if you can see angle wise uh, I'm not sure what the best angle light wise I try and just put extra light um, uh, let's see, yeah so when I pull the trigger down the sear here is going to drop to be flush with the underside of the gun so it's no longer protruding up naturally it wants to sit up there where it's going to get in the way of uh, of the cocking piece. The cocking piece wants to go. It can't because the trigger trigger hangs it up right on the underside. But once that trigger is pulled, the talking piece can come forward. And uh, likewise, when you pull the bolt out, you're uh, just camming that back down. So, sorry I don't have enough room to put whole rifles up on the bench. Uh, it's actually a small table, not a bench. Um, anyway, reassembly. Um, just as easy as disassembly. Uh, honestly, it, it's just not that hard. Um, Sorry, I was just playing around. So, uh, reassembly. We want to take our spring, put it on our firing pin, take our, our bolt handle, and uh, put it through. And now you'll see the spring comes out the back, but it's not going to come out quite enough for us to grab the threads. Uh, right now, we're, we're a little far from the threads. The threads start, you got to compress it about an inch, and then they start. And so the easiest way to deal with that is to, uh, I find, to put it on a, a flat surface, push it down, and, uh, and do my first couple turns that way until I feel the threads bite. And once the threads bite, then it's, then it's really easy. So that, that is now started. And um, again, with our built-in Wild Wacky Wonder tool, we can just uh, sit there and spin it right back into position. using the tool to hold on to the end and of course you can do this with a pair of pliers too I mean you don't just don't put a ton of pressure on it you just don't want to bend that spring and as you're turning eventually you're gonna feel it bottom out and when it does bottom out um, if yours is normal it's gonna have that that line across the makes it look like it's a screw head even though you never stick a screwdriver in there and just back it off till it's uh, even again, because that's the correct position for assembly and disassembly. So that's the idea, is you screw it all the way down, and then that's going to be pretty close to flush, and then back it off until that whole uh, area lines up again. And uh, then you want to drop the track on, and remember that the track has to be lined up with the, uh, with the sear system. So if you put the track on wrong, because it can go on, this is this part does have a flat uh, top and bottom side. It does mate correctly with um, the firing pin. So if the firing pin's not in the right place, then that's not going to go on right. So that's the other reason you line it up, is to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be for you to put it all back together. And then last but not least is uh, the head of the system. Now. The head has a couple things. It's got a track, 
and the track is where this lug uh, rides. So this lug rides in here and can rotate to the right. So it follows in here and over there. It's just that little piece is what we're watching. And it, and it goes, line that right up with the track, goes in, and that gives you that much rotation. And then of course in this angle it comes out. The other part of the head that matters is its own little uh, lug there, which drops into this chamber right there on the uh, on the bolt body. So again, put this on and it should all line up track wise. This guy, you want to make sure you're aiming for that correctly. And uh, whoops. Uh, you have to put it on first to line this the the track the the sear track part up, and then you can rotate it over and and slide it up and on, because it is off just just a little bit. So the idea is it can come out and then over and then off. Um, alternatively, you can you know put these guys on beforehand together so that this is one piece, and then when you're putting this part on. Uh, you just make sure that you line line it up on top. So it really doesn't matter which order you do any of this in. The key is that you want to get all of it back on and remember that there's nothing really holding it there yet. And so this is the simulation of the bolt in the fired position in the gun. So that's why it doesn't fall apart when it's out of the gun. When it's in the gun though, however, it's uh, it's free to go all over the place. These lugs pass uh, the lugs in, in the gun and so inside the firing uh, weapon these they went in top and bottom side but there's two big chunks of steel on the inside of the receiver and once you actually rotate the bolt into position those two lunks of steel are behind these lugs that's why it's locked up that's the lock of of the system and that's why when the round goes off nothing this piece can't go anywhere it's held into the receiver it doesn't matter that this piece is flopping around because it's actually you know, held over on the right behind the rest of the gun, but it's not like this, the bolt itself, the idea here is that the force is never on the bolt itself coming back. If something were to break, uh, you don't want this flying back at you necessarily. So the pieces that hold it in are all up front. So anyway, to, to get it all the way back in, you have to use a little bit of elbow grease because basically we're gonna just cock it manually. And the way to do that is you're gonna hold on to it here and put a finger up here to make sure that the you know stuff doesn't fall off and we're just gonna pull this back and rotate uh, 90 degrees to the right and that that puts our bolt back in the upright position so taking it apart we rotated 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise at which point this this front system is free putting it together 90 degrees clockwise and now can't move everything's holding everybody else in and uh, when you fire, the whole trick is that when you put this in there and cock it, essentially this piece is held in place. When we manually rotate it, it really wants, that big spring is pulling it forward. But what's happening in, in the actual firing is that you know when you cock it, the back stays back there. It stays all the way at the back because that's, uh, the sear is holding it back. And when the sear comes out of the way, that big old spring brings it slamming forward, which of course leaves your firing pin protruding significantly. Remember, this was for a days when primers were not made out of uh, awesome thin sheets of uh, aluminum and other sheet metals. We didn't have sheet metal back then, essentially, or at least not the kind we use today, paper thin sheets. So primers were much stiffer. And so... Uh, um, back in the gun is pretty straightforward as well. Um, you're going to just uh, operate the trigger, I mean, pull the trigger to the back and uh, slide the bolt in. And once the bolt is in, um, past, the, you know, past that point where it's blocked. Oh, that's another thing I can show you. The reason the bolt doesn't just fall out without you pulling the trigger is because the sear gets caught up. The track does not run all the way through. The track stops there, so you have to pull the trigger to get that sear out of the way for you to get it past the rest of the bolt there. So it goes in, 
and it's cocked. Now remember what I said about it being cocked. If you watch this back piece here, um, when we cock this, the back piece doesn't get to move real far. It's still held up on the sear. It wants to come forward, but now the trigger is holding it. Now, like I said, the trigger itself isn't holding it. It's the sear that's holding it, and the trigger has some flop before it actually encounters the sear. But once it does encounter the sear, uh, what we're going to see is the entire piece. Now, remember, the firing pin is screwed into this, so when this moves, that whole firing pin is moving. So when I push my trigger, that whole piece moved forward. And uh, theoretically, if I was super strong, I could just cock it again by pulling really hard. Um, now, of course, that's really hard to do. So it's a lot easier to actually be able to simply operate the bolt, which does the same thing. So we're in here. It's locked up now. Pull our trigger. It goes bang. Um, the way that this whole piece is designed, as I am turning, as I'm lifting this, that whole thing is going to push the bolt back into that position. And that is because of this big angle here and this big angle here moving against each other. That is overcoming all that spring force by me only having to lift essentially straight up as the operator of the gun. I'm, I'm converting that vertical easy straight lifting force into a rearward spiral force that pushes it back until the sear automatically because it's on that big leaf spring pops up and catches it. Um, probably can't get in there to see the uh, yeah I don't have a good way to get this on film but you can probably see in your own the, uh, the lugs and how that whole system works uh, everything else in here the uh, the shell holder and, and plate that's designed to keep um, uh, to keep rounds from popping up when they're not supposed to as well as to uh, is that actually part of the ejector on the Mosin? It's been a while since I played with this. Hang on. Yeah, it's also part of the ejection stroke. This little tab there is technically the ejector, but this this rest of this plate is actually um, keeping shells in the in the in the in the magazine from popping up too fast. So as the bolt draws off one, it's going to pop just enough to let one out but then it hits it ejects and that lets everything come back forward and it kind of holds the rest of the shells down. So that's what's going on with that springy mechanism over on the side. And that is that for the Mosin Nagant bolt. So once again making it easy when you take it out of the gun you're just gonna grab the back rotate it 90 degrees. If you're thinking about holding the front part still then you rotated it counter the rotated the back counterclockwise at that point all that stuff comes off and you can use the, the track as a as a tool to unscrew it once you screw it back on you make sure that that's aligned the line across the back and uh, you make sure this is in the track and on you just hold it all together and slide it on and the things you're making sure that are all lined up is that it goes into the track and that this piece in the front makes it into its little hidey hole put a finger on it just to hold it still and undo now I'm going to pull this part back and rotate 90 degrees clockwise this time the other tip about the Mosin is um, and on all your surplus guns anything that you bought uh, that was a military rifle used before 1970 is going to be packed in cosmoline of some kind. Uh, grease looks like brownish Vaseline. Um, the more that's on that gun, the kind of happier you should be in a lot of ways because where there is cosmoline, there cannot be rust. Where there is not cosmoline, however, you know, for all we know, this thing was in a crate at the bottom of the ocean. So anything that wasn't covered in cosmoline has the potential for being covered in rust. So the worst time I, I ever, the only problem I had a real problem with cosmoline, whereas I got a weapon and it had cosmoline just about everywhere, um, but had just managed to create a situation where the cosmoline actually trapped a pocket of water. And so while there was cosmoline on 99% of the gun, there was this two inch spot of it where as the cosmoline got stripped away, there was this nasty 
what appeared to be seawater in it and a very rusted spot on the gun. But the point is the cosmoline can get on there really nasty and all greases can get on nasty. And what you want to use to get that off um, is is isopropyl alcohol. Rubbing alcohol, go, it's, you know, a buck a bottle at the drugstore, get the stuff that's, you know, 90 plus percent, don't get the 70 percent, that's too much water. Um, and you still don't want to leave it on metal for long, but it is the right kind of solvent. The kerosene that's in your regular Hoppies number nine, or just about everything else out there, they're pretty crappy solvents for grease itself. They're great for fouling, but for cosmoline level stuff, um, you're going to go through a lot of the isopropyl, put it on a rag, wipe stuff off. It's the, it, I find it's the best to get stuff off. It does leave the metal completely bare and completely dry. So as soon as you get your cosmoline off, get oil back on it, preferably even grease. There's a light layer of grease on this. Uh, I'll have to do an entire video just on the right way to grease guns because very few guns actually use grease. Um, any modern gun, no grease, there's going to be oil on it. People love to use grease and they love to use a lot of grease. It's just a bad idea. But on these, the, that was that was appropriate. And the idea with grease is that you should never be able to see the grease when you're done. When you start putting grease on, you know, if you get something that's a, a white pasty grease, and I, I mean, the white lithium grease is fine, but frankly, go get this stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's just cheap. Military uses it and uh, it's pretty much uh, great for everything that actually needs grease. But the mistake people make is putting a lot of grease on. You know, they get that little tube of white lithium and squirt grease into something and think that they've done a good job. You're not packing bearings here. That's not how this stuff works. The grease is only effective if there is a invisible film on it. Actually, I think that's, um, yeah, that's these guys logo. Right under the label there, it's the film. Film is the key word. If you can see the grease, there's too damn much grease. You should never be able to see it. If you can see it, all it's doing is accumulating goop and making making a spot where stuff is just going to get sticky and caught up and and then it's going to dry out and get gummed up. Grease is, is a fine layer on all the metal parts, and I mean fine. If you can see it, there's way too much. So I, what I do is I get the these art brush, they call them acid brushes. They're basically just disposable paint brushes. I dip them very lightly in the grease, and I spread one blob of grease over the entire thing. I mean, I just keep spreading and spreading and spreading until the grease is everywhere. And um, if I can see any of it, if I see, you know, the, the little lines from the paintbrush, too much grease. When you're done, you just won't be able to see it. You'll be able to feel it. My hands are all slimy now because I've been monkeying with this showing you guys. But um, in terms of, you know, the proper way for it, that, that's what you want to do. So get all that yellow funky stuff off with isopropyl alcohol and then, you know, uh, dry. it'll dry pretty quick. Get that layer of grease on all of it. And, uh, you know, what I like to do is start with too much and go till I can't even tell there's any left. And that's the right amount. And there's still some places on this that I haven't been, you know, perfectly artistic about getting everything out of. If you look at that, there's a little chunk of, based on the brownish red color, the original Cosmoline still stuck on there. So, like I said, if it does dry up and get nasty. But anyway, that's uh, that's the way to take care of it, and your uh, moist nugget will keep you keep you safe in any kind of uh, battles where you need a lance that can occasionally fire bullets. Hope you had fun. Stay safe.